But uh, you had a company. Yeah, you um, sold the company. The PHP? PHP, yeah. You PHP. sold that company, right? I did, yes. For how much? Uh, it's shy of $300 million. Jesus. And I own 83% of it, yeah. Yeah. Look at him, look at him. Look oh, yeah. Look By the way, he's, I, listen, it in. Yeah, he's actually I, blushing right now. <laughs> no, listen, I will, I will tell you. I've made millions, mm -hmm. and then I made tens, but I had never made hundreds. Mm -hmm. And it's a very different experience. So you guys have made money. I mean, you guys, I, mm -hmm. I'm not going to say the number, what you told me last time on how much merch you guys sell. But you, mm -hmm. for you to be able to give away all the trucks that you give, you make a lot of money. You're not going to yeah, give away right, the, the yeah, stuff yeah. that you guys are making very good money for yeah, yourself. I do all right. Yeah, you do all right. I think it's more than <laughs> yeah, you do yeah. all right. You no, guys I, do. I'm just getting by. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> You're getting by. <laughs> yeah, I'm but, doing but I'm you, hanging in there. Yeah. Life's tough. But that's, but that's the that's the thing about when you're working, you know, you're like you're building something, you're building something, you're like, oh my gosh, like, is this thing? And then all of a sudden one day it hits, you're like, this is real, right? Mm -hmm. This is exciting. Yeah, we we grew the insurance company from uh 66 agents to 40,000 agents in 49 states, a few hundred offices, and then today we've licensed 50,000. We grew the profit last year from 22 to 23. Shy of 70% growth in profit after wow. we sold uh, of what happened last year, which was an exciting thing to see where the partners are growing as well. But, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, look, uh, uh, guys. If you'd have hired us, we'd have ruined your whole company. <laughs> <laughs> you would have done the merge. Yeah, you yeah. would have killed it because <laughs> we been out of business. suck at selling merge. <laughs> you know, yeah. Guy sends me a message today on Manect. Yeah. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Manect or not, the app. Mm -hmm. So this guy sends me a message on Manect, and he says, hey, Patrick, you know, is there any way – I can be successful as an insurance agent working nine to five because I have a kid and my wife makes three times as much money as I make. Mm -hmm. Can I be a successful insurance agent selling life insurance working nine to five? I said, who the hell is home from nine to five? The decision makers are home after six. So if you're going to sell insurance, exactly. That's what we learned in this. Yeah. You got to get past the gatekeeper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I said, I said, these damn gatekeepers, man. <laughs> Can't get past yeah. them. Yeah. It's hard. Yeah. Yeah, it's so, hard. So insurance is you sell from 6 to midnight. That's when you sell. Mm. Wow. That's, That's when we sold a lot of vacuum cleaners. When, yeah. you, when anybody got home. home from work. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. So, so, and, and then imagine doing that for you know, a couple decades that you're selling and building an insurance company. And then finally wow. somebody comes and saying, hey, we kind of want to buy your insurance company. Great. And then that happened. So it was a great feeling when it, when it happened. Was it tough selling it? No, it wasn't. <laughs> it, it wasn't. And I'll he he you, gave the speech. Where's your wife at? Let me talk to him. <laughs> but, but let me tell you why it wasn't tough selling it. Here's what was tough selling it. So one day, we're sitting with our board. I'll never forget this. If the people who, are, who were at this meeting, you know who you are. We're having our board uh, pre-board uh, meeting dinner at Ocean Air Dallas. Mm -hmm. And Ocean Air is a, is a good restaurant. They have good food. They have very good food. So we're there talking. And one of these guys said, but I, said I said, listen, I want to go talk to the big investment bankers in New York. And I want to see what the company's valuation is. And this guy says, no one's going to talk to you. Your EBIT is only a couple million a year. Who the hell is going to talk to you? I said, what kind of a guy are you being here on a board? You're one of our board members, and you don't even believe in the company. So we got into it during dinner. Mm -hmm. And he said, I'm not saying that, but no one is going to sit with you. I said, listen, your job as a board member is to help give counsel to me and make some introductions. Mm -hmm. You're a strategic partner. Put me in front of six brokers, investment bankers that specialize in insurance. I want to talk to them. Let's go to New York. One of the guys, Greg says, Pat, give me a week. Let me get it done. He books me with six investment bankers in New York. Mm. And this is 2018. So we go to New York. 20, 2018, 2019, we go to New York. 2018, we go to New York. So one, two of the investment bankers sold smaller insurance company, like $10 million to $50 million. And they were very interested in us. The second insurance uh, uh, investment banker sold between $50 to $200 million companies. And the third one sold 200 and up, couple billion. They did one of the bigger deals, two and a half billion, three billion. That's what they sold. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, I'm interested in the third. Mm -hmm. The third is not interested in me. The first is very interested in me. I'm not interested in the first because you know what I'm saying. <laughs> right, right. So I sat there and I'm like, guys, he says, I said, so what is uh, the valuation on a company like mine right now? I said, well, you know, five times EBITDA is what it looks like because you're an FMO. So if you get five times, that's good. I'm like, five times? I would never sell five times. Who's selling for 15, 20 times? Oh, you're not going to get 15, 20 times. Why not? You're not. I said, but tell me who is. He says, the only way you get 15 plus X is if you are a tech-enabled company that you have your own technology and software. I said, I have all the software that I use. He said, but it's not yours. You're renting from somebody. Or you're paying an annual $50,000 fee or whatever. Mm -hmm. I said, I am, but I'm using them. He says, that's the point. It doesn't mean anything to somebody that buys. We came back. 
after a full day in New York, first thing I did, we had a meeting. We had a bunch of guys in Dallas that came and pitched us uh, to develop a software that we wanted. Mm -hmm. Eventually, one of the companies came. We spent $200,000 for eight weeks. They would sit in our conference room every single day with 500 sticky pads every day, step by step by step. We paid them a couple hundred thousand dollars to just show us the first run on what it would take to build the software. Mm -hmm. Eight weeks later, they give that to us. We paid $200,000 for this thing. Then we came back. We went and shopped it with other companies. One of the guys that we had done business with, we brought him in. They built the uh, software called Bamboo. It took us probably $5 million. Today, we probably spent $10 million on the software, but at the time, it was $5 million that we spent onto the software. And the next thing you know, we went from being a five times EBITDA company mm -hmm. to a 15 times EBITDA company. So then when I met with people that wanted to buy us, they're talking to a tech-enabled insurance company. So the valuation 3 x mm -hmm. And that's when they realize if we buy these guys, we can sell this software and we can use it everywhere. It was a beautiful thing. So, But mm -hmm. that's when I realized this is not hard to – we had at, at the peak of it, all the offers combined, we had 17 offers to buy the company, like offer, offer, mm -hmm. sent, 17 offers to buy the company. It was a great experience that we went through over that two-year period. We learned a lot. Mm -hmm. But then eventually one guy came in and says, look – we want to make an offer, and we want this business. We had a five-hour dinner at Casa D'Angelo. Mm -hmm. I, was, I was dealing with another offer. We were talking to Bain and others, and then eventually we're like, yeah, this makes sense. We came back. We accepted the offer. We went through a five-month process. We closed. While I was a one-week vacation in Monaco, we closed in Monaco. <laughs> they didn't try to lowball you? Uh, <laughs> they, they couldn't because I said this is the number, mm -hmm. and they said, let us sit on it. They came back. They said, let's go with it. Great. And then we went through, they kept their word, and classy people, yeah. great people. And he's right now built a company that's hey, a, a did, massive company. Did they wire the money to your account, or did he give you a check? <laughs> no, they wired. Yeah. Oh. No, yeah. I said, give me a check. I'm going to walk in the bank with this. No, they'll flip out if you go to the bank. They yeah. think you don't know. Yeah. They wire the amount. And when it hits, yeah. your guy calls you, and they're like, hey, we just got a check for this much. Okay, this is real. Yeah. yeah. And then we go to the breakfast. My, my wife and I, for three and a half hours, we're like, you know, this is official. She's crying. We're having this great conversation. It was a great conversation we had, but life-changing type of stuff.